everyone. Uh, it is Sunday. Thanks for joining me today for a week-long vlog. I hope you're doing well. I am coming at you from my iPhone, uh, my iPhone, whatever it is, because, and not my regular like 4 HD camera, because I am in, oh, my hair, Charleston. Wait, no, I'm in Charlotte. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I've been here since Friday, I believe. Thursday. Friday. Thursday. I've been here since Thursday. Um, I can't think when there's a camera on me. Okay, yeah, I've been here since Thursday. Fly out tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. But yeah, I've come. I'm. We're thinking about maybe moving here to still on, stay on the East Coast. We're originally in. I mean, we're in New York City, but coming down here to North Carolina. Thinking about coming here. Maybe planning some routes. Who knows? But I'm in the Airbnb right now in Charlotte. Uh, oh my gosh, why can't I think? Uh, yeah, it's a it's an addition to a house, so it's not above like a garage or anything, but it's behind the house. Pretty large. It's a one bedroom, one bath. This is the kitchen right here. Haven't cooked in it. Okay, also I today I picked up the Anthelios La Roche Posay Anthelios. Is that how you say it? SPF 50, broad spectrum 50, universal tinted sunscreen. It is a pure mineral sunscreen. I put it on today, and you know, honestly, I am not loving it. Not only is it just titanium dioxide, and I have a video on this, by the way. Not only is this just titanium dioxide, it doesn't have zinc oxide, so it's only offering protection against UVA2, um, but really good protection against UVB. Not only that, it's not really offering that breadth of coverage that zinc oxide would also provide, but the tint on here, I, I thought it was gonna be really light, and it's universal, it said universal, but it's really dark on my skin. So I, you know, it's honestly kind of orange on my skin, kind of like the, what was the other, the drugstore one, the tinted CeraVe, tinted CeraVe sunscreen. Um, that was kind of orange. This one's kind of orange on me as well. And I'm not honestly loving it. I think I, I, I'll still definitely use it. I got it today. I'll still definitely use it, but I'm going to layer it with something probably a little lighter. So I actually bought, brought a bunch of sunscreens with me for the trip. I brought the... L to MD UV Broad Spectrum SPF 30. This is the combination sunscreen with zinc oxide and octanoxate. It is non-tinted. And I also brought the tinted all mineral version, the uh, SPF 41. I really like both of these, to be honest. Like the tinted version works well for my skin tone and this combination non-tinted skin version works well on my skin tone. I bought the Anthelios because I was going to like the, a state park. I think it was Crowder's State Park. And um, I didn't have a sunscreen on me, so I had to go to Target on the way because the Airbnb was out of the way. So I went to Target and the only tinted mineral sunscreen that I could find was the Anthelios. And so I picked that up kind of reluctantly. I mean, it was also $33, but I got a $5 gift certificate, I think, or gift card from Target. And uh, that sort of kind of offset the price, I, I guess. But I... Yeah, I picked that up and I used it. It definitely offered protection. I mean, I already had one layer of the <laughs> um, UV facial on underneath that. So I'm sure I had sufficient protection regardless of whether or not there was, well, there wasn't any zinc oxide in the um, anthelios, but you know, that's okay. The one that I wanted to use today at the, at the state park was the Color Science Face Shield SPF 50. I really like this one. This one works really well for my skin. Yeah, and this is a mineral, 100% mineral tinted sunscreen, PA++++. I think it's zinc oxide and it's just zinc oxide. So it doesn't have titanium dioxide. I feel like if it had titanium dioxide, maybe that PA would be higher. I'm not sure. Um, but it's just zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is really going to protect you from that UVB, from the burning rays, but this one would be really good for the aging rays, the UVA. Yeah, I have a mess of things in my travel bag, so I also have this sodium PCA spray that I haven't really talked about, I don't think, on my channel. I also have the lip SPF that I haven't really worn a lot lately. And some of the, you know, ordinary buffet. Got the mermaid gel, UV mermaid gel. Can, can, make, can me. Okay, so it's my last day in North Carolina, um, in Charlotte fly out at around 6 o'clock p.m. I think right now I'm just walking in a neighborhood potentially no actually no in reality um, I use that word a lot potentially I think because I'm so used to talking about clinical research that you know not everything is set in stone and established so I always say potentially possibly whatever but I'm using some protective measures right now I'm using a my UV protective sunglasses hat gloves, UV protective gloves, UPF. Um, I'm also wearing the L to MD SPF 30 plus sunscreen with, I think it's a combination of zinc oxide and octanoxate, protecting from the sun. And it also helps to have this sort of canopy of trees. You see this sort of canopy that we're under? That's what I like kind of like about North Carolina is that it's very 
tree-y. <laughs> um, there's like a lot of vegetation and overgrowth. Very different from, well, different from New York City because all we have are, you know, skyscrapers and uh, skyscrap skyscrapers that are keeping us protected kind of from the harmful rays of the sun. But we also have uh, in Texas, where I'm from originally, a lot of the a lot of the like uh, streets or like as the car coming, it's kind of awkward. Um, a lot of the streets and the neighborhoods are fairly new. The trees are kind of just I don't know, like twigs basically, because they plant new trees, and it's nothing like this. Like look at look at this. back to New York and I came up to the door to see that my Amazon fresh grocery delivery had just been delivered and I just wanted to show you everything that I got so I got some snacks I don't I try not to eat a bunch of fried foods but I had these a couple of weeks ago these pakwe is that how you say it haunted ghost pepper Ugh, why did I sound like that haunted ghost pepper chips and these uh, these will burn your taste buds off if you're into that um, I love, love, love spicy food. So I picked up two of these. I think they're like three something each because I can't find them anywhere. So I picked them up on Amazon Fresh and I'm gonna keep those going. I love spicy foods, it's so good. If you like spicy chips, try these Pakwe ghost pepper chips. I also got some bean filled jalapeno nacho because I can't get away from the spiciness. And I got three different types of chocolate because you know I love chocolate. I got 90% lint. Love the, as dark as you can go, I love the 90%. I also got some Lily's baking chocolate that I just sort of snuck on. It's sugar-free, sweetened with stevia and erythritol, as is this one, which is more, more of like a dessert bar, which is the milk chocolate salted almond. I like their dark chocolate as well, but um, the milk chocolate definitely has more flavor, uh, in my opinion. I like regular sugar. I like the as dark as you can go, but sugar-free, I like the milk better. And I also got a bunch of just antioxidant-rich foods like blueberries, limes, lemons, apples, peppers. Colorful fruits and vegetables really are antioxidant-rich and go a long way in your skin, your hair, your nail health. Got some deeply rich colored tomatoes. I actually just eat these throughout the day. I snack on these. I love cherry tomatoes so much. These are my favorite, these wild wonders. Got some Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt. I didn't really start eating this until I actually went to Greece. When I went to Athens, I had this for the first time and I loved it. It was just like Greek yogurt and honey. Fantastic. This is, the, I think the Amazon Prime version, Happy Belly. Also, I don't have my okra plants anymore because I sold my indoor garden, but I got some fresh wrap okra. These look pretty good actually for store wrap okra. I love these. Also in my antioxidant rich foods, I got a head of purple cabbage or red cabbage. It's purple colored and these are deeply, deeply colored because that, that really shows the antioxidant richness of the food. Got some bubbly, everything's upside down. Got some bubbly sparkling water, blackberry bubbly. These are sugar-free, no sweetener added. 18 eggs for that lutein and the, um, I think these are cage-free, for the lutein and the choline and the protein B12 as well. Let's see what else I got. got some almond, unsweetened almond milk, another Happy Belly brand. Got some Almond Breeze unsweetened chocolate milk. I really like this. I couldn't find the bigger version, so I just got this. 32 quart ounce, or 32 fluid ounce quart chocolate uh, almond milk, but it's unsweetened, no sugar. I really like this. Try this out if you like um, sort of, if you like milk chocolate, but you don't want the sugar, I definitely recommend this. You could probably even sweeten this with stevia. Also, I got these ashwagandha gummies. I had a bottle of ashwagandha that I swallowed, but I've really been getting into these sort of chewable vitamins a lot. And these are gummies. I think these are actually, these have sugar in them. I think it's, it's two gummies, 3.2 grams of sugar, or three grams of sugar. Uh, but I'm gonna just do one at a time because it's already 2,000 milligrams per uh, per gummy. And I think a lot of the studies use quite a bit less than even a thousand. So I'm just gonna do one every other day or so. Ashwagandha is a natural herb. It's supposed to be good for, I guess, sort of maybe managing stress or 
stress support. <laughs> um, there are studies showing that it can possibly help that, but there's other studies that I found that show that ashwagandha can increase certain in or, uh, antioxidants, so catalase for instance, that are very, very potent anti-aging antioxidants that I find really intriguing. So I'm gonna try these out. I really like these chewable chewable vitamin gummies. So it is 2.42 in the afternoon on a Thursday. I'm making a cup of hot cocoa powder. It's still summer, obviously. I mean, it's September 2nd, um, but I drink hot cocoa every single day, basically, in addition to eating chocolate every single day. Um, I'm using this milk frother. I usually use this to blend up and stir together the cocoa powder because if I don't, it's... Um, but cocoa is a great source of polyphenols and antioxidants that can essentially be anti-aging and helpful for healthy skin. Cocoa poly polyphenols have actually been shown to protect against UV radiation and damage in the skin. Um, so a healthy intake of cocoa stands sugar, obviously. I don't put any sugar in this. I just put a dash of Celtic sea salt, which I have right here. And that's sort of, I just stir that again. And there's my afternoon bevy. Hi there. Okay, it's Thursday, and I just wanted to quickly show this to you before I throw it away. I just used this up, but this is the Aveeno Protect Hydrate Sunscreen SPF 60. I picked this up just on a whim when I was in Georgia, I think, a couple of months ago. I needed some facial sunscreen. This is just a chemical sunscreen, avabenzone, octosalate, uh, octosalate, octosalate, and homosalate. No minerals at all, but this burns my eyes so bad. I abhor this sunscreen and I do not recommend it. If you are sensitive to chemical ingredients, this is just not great. It gets into my eyes. I, I can never not get this in my eyes, but I use it up anyway. Right now it's burning my right eye. I, don't, I have no idea how it got into my eye. It must've just trickled down somehow, but it is awful and I'm miserable for hours and I just can't get it out of my eye no matter how much I flush my eye out. It's just not worth it. Even though it's pretty inexpensive and it ha it's a good moisturizer, if you are very sensitive to chemical sunscreens like I am and they just burn your eyes, even if they don't get near or into them, but they're near your eyes, definitely avoid this one. It's just not worth it. Maybe just avoid all chemical sunscreens altogether, which is what I try to do. Hi, okay, so I was just about to jump in the shower, but before I do, and just to sort of end this, this week-long vlog for you, I wanted to quickly do a review of the Anthelios Tinted SPF 50 sunscreen. You know how I was saying earlier that I didn't really like it for the color or really for the fact that it doesn't contain zinc oxide, it just has titanium dioxide in it. You really kind of understand why I don't like it. It's basically the color and the fact that it doesn't have the, titan the zinc oxide in it and just titanium dioxide. But before I jump in the shower and just sort of wash my face and get everything off that's, that's currently on there, I think like I said, I just have right now the um, combination zinc oxide, octanoxate, Elta MD sunscreen. But I wanted to put this on here just to show you what it looks like. Um, I think that this will give you a better idea of what it looks like on sort of pale skin like mine. So when it comes out, it looks like, it is kind of runny. Let's see if it can come. Do you see how dark that is? It's like a sandy tan uh, and it just doesn't really match my skin tone even when I rub it out, but I'll show you what it just sort of looks like on this side of my face. So you can see the contrast between my actual skin tone. Do you see how dark that is? Like a sand, a sandy, almost muddy, sand color and it is very liquidy um it's akin to the i think like the color science tinted mineral sunscreen that actually contains only zinc oxide so there has to be a balance i don't know why they just this one contains titanium dioxide the color science only contains the zinc oxide there kind of has to be a balance because it's those ingredients together that really help to protect against both UVA1, UVA2, as well as UVB. I'm gonna add a little bit more so I can get the same amount of coverage that I would if I was actually applying this in, in the real world, in real life settings. I just put on, before the video, I just put on some petrolatum on my lips so that it probably looks very wet right now. But like I said, um, the Anthelios La Roche-Posay, it's very, it's extremely moisturizing. It's very, very runny, which can be great for people with dry skin. I think it's due to the silicones, the um, dimethicone that's in here, which is great for dry skin and really helps to smooth it out. But as you can see, this isn't like my natural skin tone. So I don't really, I don't really like the color. I don't appreciate it on me. And again, I'm not getting that robust protection from UVA, UVA1, UVA2. 
mainly UVA UVA one. I am going to be protected from the sun burn though, which which is nice. So like if I if I went to the beach, which I never do, or go to the pool or go outside, likely won't get sunburn. But it's really the UVA one that I'm concerned about the the effects of the sun that you don't see immediately that just sort of happen over time. I think this could be great for someone. Okay, do you see like contrast? I don't know. Can you see any contrast? So this is like my naked face and this is the Anthelios La Roche-Posay side. Um, just sort of doing a split face experiment here. It is it is darker, but I think in real life, it pro it might look good on the camera, I don't know, but I think in real life, it's just too too much darker. It's, it's noticeably darker for my skin type. Again, it's just, I don't feel comfortable with the fact that it only has titanium dioxide in it. I don't know. If you've tried this sunscreen, let me know down below if it works for you, if you like the color, if you don't mind that it doesn't have uh, zinc oxide in it. Again, it is a broad spectrum sunscreen technically, but you're not getting that breadth of coverage that you would get from something that also contains zinc oxide. Now, one thing that this does kind of maybe have going for it is its patented antioxidant system called Cell Ox Shield. And this basically comprises not only the the, the filter, the titanium dioxide, but it also comprises a antioxidant derived from a tropical plant leaf, I believe. I think it's Cassia alata leaf extract. So antioxidants, and you've probably heard me talk about this before, but in their isolated form, they are fairly unstable unless you have some sort of technique that you can, can use to stabilize the, the antioxidant. So whether or not, you know, applying an isolated antioxidant on your skin is actually going to do anything, it's hard to tell. But there's quite a few studies showing that both topical application as well as internal ingestion of foods that contain antioxidants can potentially help reduce the free radical damage associated with UV UV radiation. So exposure to the sun contributes to reactive oxygen species or oxidation in the skin or free radicals that really contribute and drive forth the aging process in addition to the degradation of collagen and elastin in the skin. So theoretically, antioxidants topically applied can really boost an overall level of protection that a sunscreen can provide. Again, theoretically, it's hard to know. I don't really know if there's a lot of R&D for this product in particular, the Anthelios SPF 50 Tinted Mineral Sunscreen, and whether or not that leaf extract actually provides greater protection than just the titanium dioxide alone. But I think, you know, I try to choose a sunscreen that has some type of antioxidant in it, even if it's just like vitamin E or vitamin C, just in case for that extra added protection, extra insurance, if you will. I just find that maybe like if it is providing a benefit, it's great to have just to have that higher level of protection and antioxidant, anti-aging ingredients in there. Anyway, that's my week long vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. This is my second week long vlog. Do you like it? Let me know down below. Leave a comment, leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe as well. If you would like to join this skincare research community, I'd love to have you here. I'd love to see you back for future videos, future week long vlogs. Leave a comment down below too. Let me know if you've tried the Anthelio sunscreen. I think I said that earlier, but if you have, and if you like it, let me know down below. If you don't like it, let me know why down below. I'd love to, I think having a diverse set of opinions here in the video is healthy and will help to really improve other people's decision making abilities. Just improve, you know, to, to discern and to uh, really understand the diversity of opinions in regard to skincare products because not every skincare product is going to work for the same person. and. It's certainly true with tinted mineral sunscreens because they're all going to be different shades, different hues. It's going to, you know, accommodate different skin types. So definitely leave your comments down below. Let others know what you think. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and you have a wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.